Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Miami Heat Beat Post Game Show. I'm your host, John Carlo Navas. And with me today, it's nobody. Nobody's with me today. Um, everybody has a night off because, and my producer also has a night off. Miss you, Pablo. Um, because the Heat didn't show up, so why should they? Um, and I'm here to talk to you guys. And let's vent together because I think tonight they lost to Dallas. And I think a lot of us feel the same way. I think a lot of us are upset. I think a lot of us are really sick of how how dead they look every single night. And I think that as Heat fans, we've grown accustomed to teams looking alive. That even when they lose, there's a little fight, there's a little, there's a little zest, there's a little, there's a little bravado, and there's none of that. It just looked like guys that quit. It looks like guys that are just trying to get into, you know, April, you know, May, whatever. And I'm not going to say that they're, you know, planning their vacation, but certainly a team that does not compete every single night the way that I think the organization expects them to, the way that I think they would tell people they expect to compete, and the way that, you know, frankly, better teams than them do every night and i see chat you know just literally the first message i walk in here and it just says fuck this team um you know like that's the kind of response that people are getting you know <laughs> kyle and chat says time is a flat circle we're right back where we were a year ago you know no more dogs in the kennel you know people are complaining about bad bam games again you know jimmy looks old and bam looks disappointed that's the sentiment that is created even after wins. Because last night, they beat Atlanta in double overtime. Everybody in our chat was pretty like, eh. You know what I mean? Like, nobody was happy. Everybody was upset. And how, how do you win a double overtime game and you get that response from your, from your fan base? Right? So they played Dallas. They look competitive the first couple minutes. Dallas absolutely blows the door, the blows the game open. Miami doesn't respond. They have nothing to respond with. They don't do they don't make Dallas uncomfortable. Dallas is hitting a ton of shots. Understandably so, right? Like they're just hot. And Miami doesn't is not physical enough. Miami doesn't make Dallas uncomfortable, you know, cuz when a team is shooting like that, you need to you need to be physical cuz you know you're you need to you need to run them off their line. You need to give them, invade their space. You need to make them feel you. And Miami didn't do any of that. Their defense was atrocious today. Dallas hangs 111 on them. Um, in the second half, Dallas started missing shots, and Miami had some energy. You're, you're, Kevin Love cannot be – Kevin Love and Haywood Highsmith are the two dudes that, like, played their ass off. And Tyler Hero ha had a good second half. That cannot be – that cannot be, like – the guys that are like, all right, we're going to give life into you guys. That has to come from top down. That can't come from a guy on a two year, two way deal or a one or a minimum, minimum deal, whatever Heisman's on. And Kevin fucking love that has to come from the top. And again, it's just Jimmy comes in the game, gets a bucket and then a turnover. And Dallas had five turnovers. I think that tells you how little they were felt. Luca's amazing. They got Luca in foul trouble early, you know, and I was thinking, oh, wow, Luca had picked up two fouls. That's huge for them. And it didn't matter. It doesn't matter that he picked up two fouls. They did nothing with it. Dallas went on a run immediately as he sat. And when Luca came in the game, he just picked their defense apart. And what, you know, what, do you, what, what can you say other than like, this is embarrassing. It's a three fouls. Excuse me. I think I said two fouls. He put three fouls in the first quarter. It was just an utterly embarrassing game for them. What I don't even even looked at the box score. Not that it matters because I mean I don't care when anybody you know they all play like crap. What did Jimmy do tonight? Jimmy had twelve fucking points on five of eight shooting. Congratulations, brother! How many free throws you get? A big old, as many as Boston yesterday. Uh, what do we got? Bam, eight points, three fucking rebounds. 
Dallas had 39 as a team. Miami, well, Miami out rebounded Dallas, I guess. So that works out fine. Um, uh, Bam three for 13. Unacceptable. Un fucking acceptable. Uh, Caleb Martin, whatever. Tyler Hero played pretty good, uh, particularly in the second half. <laughs> minus five, a team leading. Excuse me. Kevin Love minus one is a team leading. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Kevin Love 16 and, and, and 11. Uh, six to nine shooting, four or five from three. I mean, those are the guys that, that kind of showed up. And then, of course, Haywood Highsmith, who just played really hard. He was two, two points, 10 rebounds. But, you know, he just he played his ass off, defended his ass off. That guy can go home well. Um, you know, Kevin can go home well. And I guess Tyler can go home. But, yeah, I just want to kind of get you guys' thoughts. I think we're all upset. I think we're all annoyed. I think we're all sick of doing these shows that, the season has two more games left. They play Toronto twice on Friday and on Sunday. We have you covered for those games as well here on twitch.tv slash Miami Heat Beat and on your pod feeds and on our YouTube channel, Miami Heat Beat. Um, but, you know, we should be like excited and like, you know, planning, you know, okay, who are they, who are they playing in the playoffs? Now it's like, are they going to, are they going to get, you know, are they going to make it? Like, uh, you know, I'd pick them to, 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 to make it, you know, off the play in because, Chicago and Atlanta aren't very good, but you know, you're just fighting for your life against Atlanta. You know what I mean? And, and, and Chicago can have a night where, I mean, you had, you needed a buzzer beater earlier in the season to beat Chicago. So, you know, what's to say that they can't, that they'll blow it, right? They're going to have two home games. Not that they're these great, that they're not this great home team either. So it's frustrating. It's frustrating that they're, we're in the same situation as last year with just, I don't know, with worse, somehow worse vibes. And so I'm going to pull up a tweet that somebody tweeted today. Uh, he does great work. His name is Matt Hannafan um, at MPH underscore eight, two, four underscore. And uh, I'll, I'll actually get the screenshot and I'll, I'll put it on the screen here so that we can all look at it together. Cause I thought it was like, really, I thought it was like kind of really telling about how the heat last year were not, you know, while they weren't very good, they showed you that they had a little bit of life. Right. They, they kind of showed you against certain teams that they can compete and they had kind of something going for them. And again, I apologize for the pod audience, but I'll, I'll read the tweet. So uh, Matt tweets the heat, the Miami heat are three and 19 25th versus teams who are top 10 in point differential. Um, they are, they have a 109, a 110 offensive rating, which is 24th, a 119 defensive rating, which is 15th and a minus 8.8 net rating, which is 20th. So those are where they rank in those statistics amongst the, the top, the top 10 teams last year, they were 14 and 15 ninth, and they were 15th, ninth and ninth in those categories respectively. So at least last year, Miami would play up to competition. They would kind of show you like, Hey, we're not, you know, we may not be playing great and we may be losing on like Charlotte randomly, but we're not, you know, we can step up and we could play with the best of them. We haven't had a lot of that this season. We have had, no signs of life other than one win against Milwaukee. And I guess a win against the Pelicans, who I believe are the Pelicans seventh right now. Because for a while, that's what Lou was touting as like their really nice win. The Pelicans are six. They're one game above seventh. Uh, so the Pelicans are fighting for their lives to not be in the plan. And, and that's kind of where we are, chat. So like, I just kind of want to know you guys' feelings. I mean, we all know how I feel. I, I just have... A lot of apathy toward them right now. I, I have a lot of disappointment toward them. I'm sure that they're disappointed in their locker room, but frankly, just being disappointed in yourselves isn't enough. Just isn't enough. You know what I mean? And I, I gotta be honest, guy, I'm, I'm fucking sick of it. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of just sick of all of it. And I know you, I feel you guys are too. Um, somebody said, uh, and chat incoming Jimmy Butler kumbaya post press. I don't want to hear what he has to say, bro. I don't. I, I just I just don't give a shit what he's gonna do. What what he's gonna he's just gonna say the same shit. Oh, we like making it hard for ourselves, blah blah. I was like, bro, I don't give a fuck. He had that little commercial today with Jeffrey the Butler. He's like, Oh, the playoff Jimmy and Jimmy Buck, it's a difference. I was like, brother, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you why are you doing this? Are you sure that this is going to work out? Because if it doesn't, we're on the fucking front lines, bro. You know what I mean? You log off. We don't. We don't. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to deal with Celtic fans, not you. So it's frustrating, man. 
it, it, it's frustrating. Chat's saying they're getting a stupidly locked in um, flashbacks. Yeah, man. I'm, um, I am too. I am too. I had to update my computer today. So like all my camera drivers and everything got messed up. All my microphone drivers. That's why I was a little late to the show today. So I'm going to be like adjusting things as I go. Cause all of a sudden all my settings are changed. Things are different. I had to like restart the computer. So bear with me guys on a, on a little bit of a weird post game, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, chat's like, this is a replay of that 2021 season. Uh, I would even argue that that, yeah, cause that 2021 season, they were coming off a finals appearance. Right. And I think a lot of people all season were like, well, they'll be fine in the finals. I actually feel the same way about their defense now than I did in 21, where I'm like, it's statistically good, but I just don't believe it's actually good. I believe their defense was second or was third or fourth as of yesterday. I'll, I'll pull it up right now. Uh, their defense was fourth. And I'm just like, yeah, I just don't I don't buy that. Like, I, I don't buy that they have the fourth best defense in the league. I think that they have moments where they can. I, I don't even think it's like a, a dominance thing. I, I just think that they play a very conservative style of defense right now. I don't think it's very, you know, I don't think it's like it, it's super suffocating, but I do think it gets the job done. I, I, not unlike Milwaukee's, um, but, they, you know, obviously they don't play such a deep drop. But I, I do think that they have kind of lost their defensive upside to be like this very scary, um, aggressive defensive team. Uh, Shmita Smolnik says uh, this season uh, went to shit when she started wearing foreskin sweaters. Uh, I'm cold. I actually don't feel well today. I think my sinus um, infection is coming back, so I'm a little cold. I'm, I'm I'm toughing it out for the fans. I like I like my skin tone jackets. You know, I I, I like I'm I'm into like beiges and like mustard yellows, and I have I bought this uh this new espresso uh, outfit from Aloe over the weekend. It's like uh it's like I bought the yoga shorts and the, and the and the yoga shirt. It's it's nice. Trust me, guys. Trust me um chat talking about bam's energy yeah man bams Bam can't skate i mean i'm i'm not defending him anymore it, it's at some point like you know you need to answer for your crime sir you don't have not looked good in a month um the three-pointer is nice it will not distract me from the truth and frankly that's that's just that's it bro it's like i, I don't think that i think that he is a guy that this is who he is on offense this, he's kind of topped out on offense for now. And the, we, we cannot be expecting more. And I guess that's on us. I think we just got to be okay with this. I do think he needs to do better than whatever it was, three points or whatever the fuck he did today. Um, I, I do think he needs to be closer to 15 almost every single night. And, you know, ideally 20, right? But these, these stinkers are just not, they're becoming the norm and they're not becoming like, you know, they're, they're not few and far between. Which is annoying, which is unfortunate. I am, I don't know what to say, guys. I, I sound pretty defeated. I'm also feeling pretty sick, but you know, I, I just, I'm just, I'm just sick of it, bro. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of, I'm just sick of the season. But you know what I'm not sick of? I'm not sick of, I'm not sick of like their, how do I phrase this? They have they have like guys like Jovic that they just churn out, right? Like Jovic has been a godsend for them this, you know, this season. I think Hakez has it. So I'm not sick of that. You know what I mean? Like they're still the best in the league at doing that, even though Hakez has like struggled a bunch. And I don't, you know, I feel bad for him. He had that one really, really nice play where he has like the triple pump fake and everything. And he just gets to the rim and he, he just totally smokes the layup. I think he's good. And I think that they're going to be fine with guys like him and Jovic. I think Hero's like really good too. And I think you kind of see how talented he is on offense. They just need their best guys to step up. Like, you know, Caleb needs to play better more often. Jimmy needs to play better more often because those other guys like Highsmith and they're good. Duncan, those guys are good. Their role guys are good. Their top guys are shitting the bed night after night. Like you get a great Kevin Love performance. You get a good Caleb Martin performance, you know, scoring wise. Tyler has a nice game and, and Jimmy and Bam put up stinkers. And it's like, that's the stuff I'm sick of. Cause I actually don't think that like Rohan had this tweet that he's like, the Celtics like did all this with their role guys. I don't think Miami's role guys are that bad, right? Like I think Duncan Robinson's a really good player. I think, you know, you know, 
Kevin's a good player. I think that Haywood Highsmith's a really nice player. I think a lot of teams would kill to have a Haywood Highsmith, especially the way he's been playing. You know, I, I think Hawkes has some ways to go, but I'm not. I'm just frustrated with their like best guys that don't show up consistently. And you can't win in the league when you have your two guys that are making like I don't know a combined fucking 120 million or whatever the fuck it is they have. The, you know, combined the season might be like closer to 100. Don't give you anything. And I don't know if you guys are frustrated by it, but it sure is me. Like, you can't, like, who who's supposed to be their go-to guy if Jimmy's just mailing it in? And I understand that he's saving himself for the playoffs because they're constructed that they just don't have enough scoring options and they're going to need... I understand him and I have sympathy toward that, but it's like, that also goes on the organization because they just haven't been able to put the right guy next to him and he's being very conservative with his play. But, I mean, he, he better show up in the playoffs, man, because if he just doesn't step up in the playoffs the way that we expect him to and he just had this season you're just like what the fuck was it all for you know what i mean like what the fuck are we doing so i'm i'm upset i'm i'm annoyed um i'm annoyed i don't know how you guys feel i think chat's pretty annoyed they say they completely agree um they said jimmy wanted Jalen brown money but now he wants to now he wants to play in <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of uh that's kind of how this goes that's kind of how this goes. I mean, it sucks that you're like losing to like guys that, you know, I mean, oh man, if they lose to Dame in the playoffs, I, I can't handle, I don't want to lose to the Celtics. That's like the one I really don't want to lose, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't know guys. I don't know, but um, yeah, man, it's, it's really, um, it's annoying. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, I do have something exciting to talk to you guys about. We are partnered with Unified. You might be asking, what is Unified? Whether you're a world-class athlete or podcaster like me, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and the proper recovery for a touch, not performance. Not what the Heat did tonight. They might need Unified. They, they didn't have it. And that's why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of Miami Heat Beat. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness that powered by the Energy Enhancement System. If you haven't heard of it yet, you'll want to listen up. The technology promotes wellness, does relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. While you're here in Miami, there are hundreds of locations here and around the globe and access to it is really affordable. I'm actually really excited. They've toured the facility. We have content coming, guys. I have content about the facility. They invited me over, and uh, and we're going to see it. Jimmy should go there. They might be able to. Got chats right. They might be able to fix him. They fix him unified. <laughs> so if you're interested in uh, in their EES system technology for yourself, go to unifiedhealing.com slash Miami Heat Beat to learn more and find a center near you. Uh, that is unified, U-N-I-F-Y-D, healing.com slash Miami Heat Beat. Uh, and yeah, so no material or testimonials on Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare producers with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment or before undertaking a new healthcare system regimen, including EES system. That is a very long ad read, guys. I, we're going to need to do something. I need to like that that disclaimer. I'm going to have to record that and like just fucking play it off a button real fast. Maybe we could do like fun music. That was a mouthful. That was a lot. But shout out to Unified. For sponsoring this episode uh they actually have really cool facilities uh i'm we're gonna post some videos that i did there uh with the intern and uh you guys are gonna like it so shout out to that um but yeah guys so we're looking we're looking at the play-in kind of going forward um it's really frustrating that dallas once again you know kind of smoked them but you know they're gonna have to they're gonna have to figure this out uh hopefully i mean i, I really don't think these last two games matter anymore i mean uh I, I uh, they knocked out. I think Orlando needed a lose or something today to for them to still be in it. So Orlando, uh, did, Orlando did lose to to Orlando to the Magic. So the Heat could still possibly get to six. So Orlando is Orlando is two and a half games back. That doesn't make sense. Can they catch Orlando? I don't think they can catch Orlando after the win. Maybe they can get seventh. Philly's a game up. Or let, 
No, Orlando lost to Milwaukee. I'm sorry. I said Orlando lost to the Magic. Um, yeah, Orlando lost to the Bucks today. Um, this maybe the current standings are not right. So Miami should be two games back of Orlando. So if Orlando loses their final two and Miami wins their final two, I believe Miami would be six. Yeah. Uh is that what it is, Trevor Ever? If Orlando loses out, we'll host the magic in the play in. Um I'm really just expecting them to just play. I mean, I'd rather play Orlando than Philly. Um, that would that would just be a lot better. I, I don't want Embiid in a one game sample, and I, I really don't want Kyle in a one game sample. I just don't. I just don't want this to happen. A uh, chat saying to sit Jimbo. No, he he hasn't earned rest. You go out and play, bro. I'm sorry. Sitting is for when you earn it. You didn't earn it. You're fighting for your lives. You're fighting for your fucking lives. Um. This, how many games does Philly play? I like how we're doing this live on air. So Philly plays tomorrow. No, Philly does not play tomorrow. Did Philly play today? Philly did not play today. So Philly's going to play on Friday. And they play... Uh, who do they play on Friday? They play Orlando on Friday. So we're rooting for Philly there. And then on Sunday, they play Brooklyn. So they're going to play two more times. And Orlando plays Milwaukee again. Uh, Milwaukee... I imagine is going to be resting everybody. Um, they are one game up on New York for two. I really don't want the Knicks to get two. So hopefully Orlando's uh, Milwaukee's clear, but you know, so that's kind of the, the situation going forward. Uh, Trevor never saying that he hopes Philly gets to succeed. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd rather than be out of Miami's kind of playing bracket and they could just deal with New York, I guess. Uh, I'd rather play Milwaukee than Boston just because I, I just cannot I cannot handle losing to to Boston on Twitter. And yeah, so uh, Trevor Never's right. Milwaukee game on Sunday will basically be uh, really a, a kind of a, a a big deal for Orlando because if you know if they especially if they lose, so lot to get to, lot to do. I'm sad. I don't know if you, I, I mean I'm just sad. I'm sad. I know you're sad. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, we're we're kind of going through playing permutations. Not not really what you want of a team that came off the final, left off the finals. Uh, Alex in chat says, "I don't want to watch a Dame go for thirty on us. I, I'd rather do that than watch Boston do it. I just I just much rather not play Boston. I, I really just like to avoid Boston. I just don't want to give them ammunition. Now they're gonna have it anyway because Miami's not gonna do well. Miami's probably gonna lose in the first round." But we can't let them have it. Maybe the Heat can can finagle. Well, if the Knicks get the two seed, then Miami could play New York in the first round. That's kind of doable. Not that the Heat deserve the benefit of the doubt, but it starts getting interesting. There's a lot. There's a lot to think about here, guys. A lot to think about here. I'm not gonna lie. There's there are so many possibilities. Miami could play the Knicks in the first round, and I don't know. I would I pick them? I probably pick them. I think they could beat the Knicks. I, I, I'm not a big Nick believer, especially without, you know, with with Ananobi's health being such a question mark. But I'm not going to hope traffic today because they don't deserve it. And this regular season, as Kevo and Chat said, has been worse than last year. Um, but yeah, the East is trash, and they should avoid the the Celtics. And we they can really beat everybody else. I mean, that's right. I mean, Paul and Chat says that, and I mean, I don't I don't totally disagree. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate where they are. Um, I saw somebody earlier said, I think this Jimmy build is over. It's sad we didn't win a title, but it's given amazing moments and we shouldn't let the low point define how amazing it's been to be a fan over the seasons. I actually think that's like a great perspective to have. I don't know if it's over. I have no idea what the organization wants to do with it. I, I can't even begin to predict, but I think that's like a really great way to look at it because if it is over, I think they provide a lot. And that's loser talk, but it's still like, it fucking sucks that really like, they might end ringless and they've been so close and it's just like, it feels unfair, but they just have not been able to like cross that hump. And man, uh, what fix us? Uh, G we shouldn't counter eggs before they hatch. We still got to make the playoffs. Oh, for sure. I mean, they might not. And, and that would be actually the most embarrassing thing. That'd be the most. Uh, and now people are asking me if Spoh's a bad offensive coach. No, he's not guys. He's not a bad offensive coach, but when, your cap is tied up and two guys that don't do anything on offense for consecutive games. What are you supposed to do? Uh, Jimmy Butler is how many points? 
again, what was it? It was like eight points tonight and on what six field goals. Not enough. You know what I mean? Not a single free throw. That's just not, that's not going to cut it. And I don't care what Spo does. Like he needs to be more active. And I do think that like they would benefit from getting like an offensive minded assistant. And I do think that they would benefit from some changes, but I think that like, I think their roster construction is more of a problem than their offense. Than their than their coaching their offensive process. I just think that they don't have guys that can beat people off the dribble, and it's really hard to win basketball games when you can't do that. It's kind of really at the crux of this all, but yeah. So I mean, listen, we're here. Hopefully, they can survive. Uh, you know, the play in, and then we can be previewing a playoff series against a team that they could be favored to win against who knows who knows um we'll, we'll be with you on friday for heat raptors hopefully that goes better and hopefully we have some good news on the orlando front and then we'll be again with you on sunday at 1 p.m for the final game of the regular season to close out another year of miami heat basketball our 11th season of heat beat shout out to all you guys who've been here for a long time love and appreciate that and yeah, stick with us and and uh, I'm signing off, but we will, I think I'm going to do a show tomorrow and then we'll resume. I, I might do a show tomorrow going over some playoff permutations or some play in permutations. And then we'll, we'll do Friday's post game. I mean, we're closing out the season. We're, we're, we're going to get content out, baby. We're moving. We're grooving. And I'll see you tomorrow.